WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Hello again, everyone. It's Professor Schwartz here in the WSTKS FM Worldwide Studios with information on nine valuable online resources you can use to create your final collaborative project for the course. When you consider and perhaps follow some of the advice in today's episode, your digital collaboration with the members of your student learning team will progress more smoothly and efficiently. In short, you set yourself up to succeed through the active cultivation of numerous 21st century employability skills as you and your team learn about and create your own new knowledge about the course materials you have examined each week during the course. When we come back, I'll get into my suggested nine valuable online resources you can use to create your third and final collaborative project for your IAH course this semester. Stay tuned. Okay, I've got the usual mug of coffee and my feline friend Onyx the Cat is hanging out behind the desk lamp to my right, so let's jump into the nine valuable online resources your student learning team can use to create its third collaborative project this semester. Before we do that, however, let's quickly look at the project assignment just to make sure that we are all on the same page. In a nutshell, your team is tasked to create a project that revisits selected materials you have examined in the course. Your project should also use your review of these materials from across the 15-week semester as a springboard into a discussion of practical solutions to social issues with which we still struggle in the 21st century, that is, issues involving power, oppression, equity, and social justice, for example. Your team has the choice of four possible options for presenting its learning and new knowledge in the form of either an interactive e-poster or a multi-page website or a digital scrapbook or a Google Slides presentation. Please see the assignment prompt in project packet number three on D2L for full details and additional guidance. Following a station identification, I'll be right back with specific information on the nine valuable online resources you can use to create your third collaborative project. See you in just a moment. You're listening to WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. If you find this podcast helpful, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Before the break, we talked about the project prompt itself and the fact that your student learning team has four possible ways it might present its learning and new knowledge. You can choose to create either an interactive e-poster or a multi-page website or a digital scrapbook or a Google Slides presentation. Let's talk now about two valuable online resources your student learning team can use to create the interactive e-poster option. To begin with, you might use Prezi, which enables your student learning team to do a number of things. Prezi has a variety of templates and is completely free. You are up to date with technology and can create your e-poster presentation in a variety of unique ways. Finally, you can import hyperlinks to additional supporting digital media, as well as convert a PowerPoint presentation to a Prezi. On the other hand, your student learning team could choose to use PowerPoint to create its e-poster should you choose. PowerPoint can be used virtually anywhere and enables your team to collaborate with relative ease. You can choose to create your own design for your e-poster or use existing templates. You can also export in different formats and PowerPoint facilitates an effective way to communicate your learning and new knowledge. It might be just the thing for your student learning team to use in the creation of an interactive e-poster. In just a moment, I'll provide details on three additional online options your team can use to create its third collaborative project if you instead opt to present your learning and new knowledge in the form of a multi-page website. Be right back. (music) 
So far, we've talked about using Prezi or PowerPoint to create an interactive e-poster that presents your learning and new knowledge according to guidelines laid out in the assignment prompt within Project Packet 3 on D2L. Let's turn now to the choices available to your student learning team if you instead decide to create a multi-page website. First, Wix enables your team to create a free and professional-looking website with over 500 customizable eye-catching templates, free reliable web hosting, and round-the-clock customer care. Wix is very beginner-friendly and can almost design itself with your input thanks to AI-based website design that can almost build your website for you. Wix has many other helpful features, and its app market lets you add more features and functionality to your website should you choose to do so. While not completely free, Squarespace, on the other hand, offers your team various possibilities for creating a multi-page website through its array of templates to help you get started with its user-friendly drag-and-drop interface. Squarespace allows data import and export, easy integration with Google Suite tools, and effective customer support should your student learning team have questions. For relatively little cash outlay, when divided between the four or five people on your team, Squarespace offers an interesting possibility for creating a website that showcases your learning and new knowledge about course material and how you might apply some of that to real-world issues. WordPress, my third suggested online resource for creating a multi-page website, should your student learning team choose that option for its final project, is easy to install and set up. It's also straightforward and relatively easy to use, plus cost-effective and cheap. WordPress is free in both senses of the word. You can download a copy of it for free, and once you have it, the app is yours to edit, customize, and use as you see fit. When we come back after another station identification, I'll have a few more pieces of helpful information for you about three more valuable online resources you can use to create the third possible option for your last collaborative project this semester. That is the digital scrapbook. Stay tuned. You're listening to WSTKS FM Worldwide Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century. If you find this podcast helpful, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. And we're back, everyone. Let's look now at possible online resources your student learning team can use to create and share its new knowledge if you decide on the digital scrapbook option for your third collaborative project. To begin with, your team might like to return to Canva, which was a possible online tool for a previous team project this semester. Canva features ready-made templates that make creating size-specific content simple with hundreds of elements, icons, and graphics to choose from. The user-friendly interface is easy to use for everyone. The app's free templates make designing content super quick with access to free, safe stock imagery. Significantly, your team members can collaborate easily with team access, enabling easy peer feedback between the members of your student learning team and near-endless possibilities for creation. Next, your team could also rely on Pixlr for creating its digital scrapbooks should you choose that option for your third collaborative project. Pixlr is an online flash-based image editing application that, for now, is free to all users. For the purposes of creating a digital scrapbook, it provides a number of tools your student learning team might use to create and share its learning, knowledge, and related ideas for collaborative project three. The app features a wide variety of tools to achieve high quality in editing images and photographs. Some users feel it's the best basic online image editor out there with a very easy to understand and use interface. Finally, your student learning team might like to use the Project Life app to create its digital scrapbook. Project Life is a system for bringing photos and stories together. It is offered in three ways to accommodate different needs and preferences with its digital option available to anyone who prefers to work on a computer as they create pages with stories, photos, and memories. The templates and designs are the same ones you'll find in the app and in physical format. It's worth noting that the digital version allows for more creativity and flexibility. 
There are numerous free drag and drop templates that your student learning team might use to create a digital scrapbook that showcases your learning and problem solving suggestions for the semester. In one moment, I'll be right back with a few words about the fourth way in which your team might present its ideas for your final team assignment, good old Google Slides. See you in two ticks. Hello again, everyone. We can't wrap up today's episode without talking briefly about the fourth possible option for your student learning team to consider for collaborative project number three. You might choose to share your survey of selected course materials and practical suggestions for addressing related real-world issues of power, oppression, inequity, and justice in the 21st century in the form of a Google Slides presentation. With Google Slides, your student learning team can create presentations right in your web browser with no special software required. Even better, multiple people can work on slides at the same time, you can see people's changes as they make them, and every change is automatically saved. Finally, Google Slides is much more compatible than PowerPoint. Your team can import and export graphics, hyperlinks to related digital media, text formats, PDFs, and even PowerPoint presentations without difficulty. Plus, your team can also publish its creations to the internet quickly and easily, as well as your submission folder for collaborative project number three on D2L. Google Slides might be just the digital tool your student learning team wants to use to develop and present your survey of your new knowledge and ideas about some of the key course materials you have examined this semester and your suggestions for more effectively addressing related social issues. I'll be back in one moment with a few final words for today. Stay tuned. You're listening to WSTKS FM Worldwide Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century. If you find this podcast helpful, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Okay, that will do it for this episode on the nine valuable online resources you can use to create your final collaborative project for the course. As always, you and your student learning team have considerable choice in how you create and share your knowledge. You do not necessarily have to use any of these suggested apps. They are offered merely as creative possibilities. There are numerous options available to you for developing interesting and engaging collaborative projects that convey what you have learned in the course in a way more dynamic than traditional papers, quizzes, and exams. Be sure to examine the project packet for collaborative project number three on D2L for more information. And if your team decides to use another app that I am not aware of, please let me know so I can add it to a future iteration of today's podcast episode. And that will do it for today. Be sure to tune in again for more helpful tips, tricks, and advice based on my 25 plus years of teaching and working with thousands of undergraduates at three Big Ten universities here in the upper Midwest of the United States. In the meantime, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in class, online, or during Zoom office hours if you drop by with a question. Stay healthy, have a safe and a productive week in the meantime. (laughs) <laughs> With special regards from Onyx, the cat what am. So long, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye, everyone. You've just heard a podcast from WSTKS FM Worldwide Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century. <laughs>